<laughs> so who wants to be first? Phil does. <laughs> no, it's, it, it won't be too personal. Well, maybe. No, but the thing about uh, pottery or ceramics, and I've tried it once, and that was the last time for me, but in, you have to be so patient. So ta let's talk about patience. Hmm. Who wants to say something about oh, patience? I want to say something okay. about patience. Yeah. I also teach ceramics uh, part-time and have for a number of years. And one of the things that I tell my students when they're impatient, especially when they're new students, is that nothing taught me patience better than clay in my life. Even my mother couldn't teach me patience, <laughs> though she tried because I could talk back to her. She didn't like it. But when you talk back to the clay, it's still going to do what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. And when you're yeah. working with clay, I like to say that you're having a conversation. The clay isn't mm. in charge, you're not mm. in charge, you have to work together. Mm. And so it's about learning what the material is ready to do, and maybe it's not what your original intention is, but we learn as we go, and I never get tired of it because there's always more to learn. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, I have another question. Okay, so each one of you I'm sure you have a favorite, favorite piece that you, you know, you're really, your soul is in it. How do you sell it? And do you sell it? Sure. Lee, I mean, you do? <laughs> I mean, would you sell that? Of course, yes. Why? Because I can always make more. But you're right. When I make work, there are, maybe I'll make a series of five or six. Mm -hmm. And quite often there'll be a single piece or maybe two that really speaks to me more than all the others. Mm -hmm. And it is a little more reluctant to, to sell that one. But if somebody loves it, then I know it's going to a good home, and it gives me the opportunity to make more. So, and each time it's a little different. But, you know, what if you had a piece that you just adored, and you really couldn't repeat it? Then how could you give up the original one? You see, I, I think one of the things is, is that we all love working in clay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all love the process of, of seeing people enjoy mm -hmm. our work mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And with, with people enjoying our work, with us having the opportunity to make more work mm -hmm. by selling mm -hmm. anything or everything, mm -hmm. we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just, we're happy, well we're happy to sell our work. And we're happy to continue making more. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, in fact, for me, for my bigger, more one-of-a-kind type pieces, I love when someone buys one of those. First of all, because my heart and soul is in it, and that somebody relates to that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then I know I get to go and make another one-of-a-kind piece that's related but is not the same. Mm -hmm. It's great, a great feeling. Isn't it really <laughs> impossible ever to repeat exactly the same piece because the firing or, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, but I don't yeah. think that's an issue. I don't think we want to do that. I think we want to keep you making keep, more. Keep mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm going to ask another question. We have a couple more minutes. Um, I, I know everybody can't wait to answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think of these things off the top of my head, but uh, I'm very interested in knowing what really basically inspires you, not just to sell it, but what inspires you to want to do this, you know, in your gut? I started in first grade. I made a sombrero ashtray and we'd work on it <laughs> once a week for a half hour. I couldn't wait to get back to it. I, I loved the feel of the clay. I, I so would you say it, it's a real emotional feeling? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, like like yeah. Phyllis, uh, you know, uh, I really want to work in the clay. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy the tactile feel that Lynn mentioned and to see something evolve. Mm -hmm and your hands are really in contact with what mm -hmm. you're doing. At the same time, I'll see something in nature, or maybe it's somebody else's work, mm -hmm. and that inspires me. Mm -hmm. And I wanna go re recreate it, or at least have a piece of it in what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I get up in the morning and I can't wait to get in the studio. But I, I think this is true of real artists who are totally committed to their art. Because I've interviewed a lot of artists and everyone kind of says this, or they seem to have the same kind of feeling that it's just a passion. You, you can't help it. You just have to do it. Is that true? I think mm -hmm. so. What about your teaching? How does that relate to it? Well, I think fortunately for me, having the opportunity to teach, mm -hmm. I, I view it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it's an opportunity to share ideas. Um, one of the things that that I, I typically tell my students is that you know, the ceramics class that they're in is about patience and generosity. Uh, patience because they will learn it through the material and generosity because they will share what they learn. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, you know, it's, I get to do that. I get to share what I've learned about clay. I get to uh, help students mm -hmm. interpret mm -hmm their ideas. And I learn so much from that. Yeah. It's, it's a joy to be teaching. And uh, as, as my career has developed, uh, I find it harder and harder to step out that door at the end of the day. It, you know, you still want to be there in the studio with the students. It's fun. Um, that's, a, that's another good question is that here, uh, Bill, you're with students, but other, otherwise, some of you who, I'm sure all of you must teach, you're so famous. <laughs> no, truly. I've taught off and on over the years. Yeah. yeah. But, and I've done workshops. Yeah. And workshops. But how is it just to be alone? It's great. Is it? <laughs> oh, but you were just saying the other thing, oh, though. Yeah. But the balance is a nice thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I know a number of artists that don't teach, and they love going to the festivals just to be in the community of other artists mm -hmm. because they feel so isolated. And I feel that because I teach and I have the alone time, I have a great balance. I like them both, but it's, it's nice to have that quiet time. I love opening the door in the morning and going to my studio and know I'm going to be in there the whole day doing my work myself. And I love being with the students. Do you think that you all are born that way? I mean, that you've got something in your brains that uh, has made you, you know, such a such wonderful artist. Because you are wonderful artists. You're, you know, you, you have to be to be in this. You know, you're juried. So I think we're drawn to create. Mm -hmm, I don't know. Yeah. And you know, there's lots of things you can be creative about. It doesn't have to be. Ceramics or art it could be cooking even. That's true. But I, we're, we're, I'm drawn to try and create something. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could just sit and do other things like read or work. Um, From the time you were a little boy, Lee, were you artistic? Yeah, I used to draw, mm -hmm. but then career and family, I mm -hmm. stopped doing that. And it was only ten years ago that I actually got into clay. Oh, really? And, uh, so it's new for me, and I feel like it's going to be a lifelong process the rest of my life. Oh, so this is a real treat for you. Yeah. 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 And unlike, unlike Lynn and Bill, I do get lonely in the studio. Oh. And uh, I, so I really enjoy when people come visit. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons why I enjoy the workshops and festivals in Asia is because I'm in a, a, an environment where there are other artists around mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And even if we're not talking, there's that mm -hmm. communication yeah. between us. And there's that energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, all I can say is we have run out of time. This has been a true joy. It really has. I mean, you all are pretty lively. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, some artists, you know, you never know, right? Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I'm a bit weird, but I'm not. <laughs> anyway, well, we I don't have to laugh. But <laughs> say it one more time. I, about I hope that, that you'll come and visit us. Oh, I, I come every year because I always do a show with you all. Okay. And, and the Palo Alto Clay and Glass Yeah, Festival. and Sharon, your PR person, mm -hmm. she's the nuts. <laughs> I'm not saying she's nuts. She is the nuts. <laughs> okay, but say it one more time. So July? It's, it's July 9th, 9th and, 10th, and 10th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, all day. Admission is free. It's basically experiencing art in the park. And there are some other activities, like I believe, I'm not sure for this year, but in general, we have demonstrations. Um, people can work with clay. There are some artists who will oh, take some time yeah. and, and work with you with clay yeah, and your yeah, children. Yeah. Um, 
what other activities have we done this year? We're more limited because we've moved temporarily into the but park. But there will be demonstrations. Yeah, food. Will there be icky and, and wine? And wine. Yay. Yeah. 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 There'll yeah. be a good time. And <laughs> wine. Thank you all. I can't wait to see you at the show because I do go every year and I buy stuff. Thank you. Because I'm an Thank addicted you. shopper. Well, well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I also, I'm so, I, I'm so grateful to my excellent, talented, creative crew. They really are. We're all volunteers and we're all addicted to television, obviously. <laughs> and of course, also, I'm so grateful to our audience who are watching. And I thank you and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>